They had me smoking weed like I'm a Rasta A lion falling to his death like Mufasa But then I got up, my spirit got roused up And now I use these scriptures like a hundred round chopper Now I use these scripts and I ain't talking about no pharmacy Addicted to the law, ate the whole roll, not talking sushi Yeah, I spit it raw, exposing flaws and ideologies Christians want no smoke, I cut them up with no apologies Fuck a Mac 11, this 1611 will give you a hundred rounds Everybody gather round, as I put your favorite pastor six feet underground This a funeral, I'm the undertaker in the mortician Rehearse them righteous acts, pray I make it past them auditions Used to be up in them churches catching hella Z's Now I'm on them corners pushing P, I'm talking all right, Shalom Wam, Shalom Wam. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to give all praises, all glory, and all honor unto the Most High God, Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. It's your brother Ariel Sakari. And uh, getting ready to have a dialogue with uh, Brother Mordecai. Right, He's been on the channel before. And uh, one of his colleagues, uh, a brother from the Congo, I believe, we're going to have a dialogue about uh african americans being the descendants of the children of israel right so we got mordecai in the back i'm going to bring you on in a second mordecai waiting for i forget the brother's name mordecai if you're in the uh, chat uh go ahead and just, just tell me the brother's name so i can properly address him um but yeah we're getting ready to have this dialogue um hopefully we'll also be able to discuss um who the messiah is and should we be following uh the traditions of mainstream judaism um with understanding that we as so-called african americans here um by and large are descendants of the 12 tribes of judah all right um so before i bring mordecai orange i want to plug a couple things real quick all right today is the 28th of february right Black History Month is coming to a close, right? This year is a leap year, so tomorrow is the 29th, right? Right now at HIBofficialzion.com, go ahead and share my screen. Uh, we are running a, a special through the end of the month, right? You can use the code Bible is Black History to get $20 off your uh, HIB order again, valid through the end of this month. Now, the HIB, if you're uh, if you've been under a rock for the past couple of months, is the first of its kind, right? It's a a revised King James Version Bible, so it has the, the entire 1611 canon, so so-called Old Testament, so-called Apocrypha, and New Testament. And uh, it restores uh, the Most High God's name, Yahweh, right, in the Paleo script. So let me zoom in real quick. If you can see right here, we have the Most High's name, Yahweh, right, in red. In the paleo font and you will see that all throughout the text uh typically where you see the phrase the lord in all caps or god in all caps in your modern bibles and then we've also transliterated the names of uh, persons places and things and what some will call the lashwan kodash or the holy tongue um, so instead of moses you'll see masha instead of david you'll see the wise so forth and so forth all right so we'll go to hibofficialzion.com all right to get your copy asap right other than that, also launched a clothing line by the name of Perpetual War, right? Perpetual War um, is inspired by Exodus 17, 16, where Yahweh, the, the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, swore that he would have war on Amalek from generation to generation, all right? So we have uh, the Israelite supremacist uh, premium crew net. This, this is embroidered, right? We have the Mawaf Lubba Ball uh, oversized T-shirts, all right, we got good old Lady Liberty, right, which is a uh, representative of Babylon the Great, America, right? Mawath meaning death, La meaning to, Babal meaning Babylon. So we have these t-shirts, and then we have the Sit in the Dust t-shirt, shirt, which is one of my favorites, right? The virgin daughter of Babylon is said to sit in the dust in Isaiah the 47th chapter. So this is uh, the back of the t-shirt, and on the front we have the Hebrew department. So without further ado, done with the plugs. All right, go to again HIB official Zion to get your HIB. All right, and go to perpetualwar.shop to cop some new 
Israelite merch. All right, let me go ahead and bring the two brothers on this onto the channel. What's going on, brother? Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. How are you? I'm good. How's it going, uh, Mordecai? Good, good. I wanted to um, first thank you for having us on. Um, we had an amazing discussion last time. A lot of people saw it, and um, I thought this would be a great opportunity to introduce you to someone who's very close to myself and and many uh, Jews of of color, you know, around the mm -hmm. world is uh, our, our chief chief rabbi of Africa, Rabbi Pinchas Eliyahu, who actually I studied underneath um, in Israel, uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, he has his own learning institution, and since they have expanded it to take on the responsibility of the continent of Africa, uh, mm -hmm. there's many different Jewish tribes throughout Africa, or, or Israelite, he, you know, Israelite tribes mm -hmm. that exist throughout yeah. Africa, and and, and one of the focuses that we're dealing with is, is North America, because as we know in the transatlantic slave trade, there was many, uh, there were there were many Igbos and Bantu Jews that were descendants of the, the Israelites that were in the transatlantic slave trade, and, and many of them came to North America. These different projects. So mm -hmm. with uh, Rabbi Pinchas, you know, he's designed different, um, you know. Like I, I call them technologies, but they're things that are connected to our African heritage mm -hmm. that uh, allows us to connect to God, you know, from the context of, of our ancestors and, you know, give, and he has a tremendous uh, outlook. But no, what, no further ado, I let Rabbi Pinkas, you know, um, tell, tell you the rest. But I could keep going if you want me to. Nice to meet you, brother. Hi, shalom, shalom, shalom. Thank you very much for the for the opportunity to, to exchange and to, to talk about uh, spirituality, religion, and other topics. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um, we are crossing a very difficult time where dialogue and exchange become like an insult. Mm -hmm. We have to be we have to be representative of the real wisdom, and the real wisdom is never afraid, never fear feel any fear when it comes about uh, bringing up truth and bringing up analysis and uh, I hope that through the, the specter of the Torah we'll be able to to go deeper in our discussions for sure for sure so uh so yeah again the the, the topic of discussion is uh of course teaching that so-called African Americans and I was and I would say this is as a blanket statement I wouldn't say that every so-called African American uh is a descendant of, of of Israel um you know myself we are I'm of the what people call one West Hebrew Israelism right so this is a brand of of what some would classify as Judaism uh that you know originates here in the states Right. There was a there was a plethora of of so-called African Americans here uh, between uh, you know slavery and post construction that understood that we were descendants of Israelites, um, many of which uh, were under a, Jew, uh, a Jewish or a uh, Ju Judaism uh, frame of mind. Um, so the school of thought that I come from, one West, um, kind of is different in that it emerged the idea of the Torah Tanakh, right? And the testimonies that are found in what people call the New Testament today, right? And true, and this is why I wanted to have the conversation with you, true gentlemen, um, because what I found in, in my in my time and understanding that I was an Israelite, um, I, I do come from a background of being a Christian. Um, I do find that many Christians, right, and I was, of course, guilty of that, uh, as well as brothers who reject the so-called New Testament, um, they don't really understand what the term New Testament means and what the term Old Testament means. And the word testament simply means covenant, right? Mm -hmm. um, I am under the uh, understanding that the children of Israel, whoever they are today in the world, are still bound and under what people consider to be the old covenant or the old testament right the covenant being between the most high god and the children of israel 
Um, the new covenant is not a collection of books from Matthew to Revelation, right? But they, that term was placed on those collection of books by a gentleman by the name of Eusebius, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in the third century AD. So this is far removed from the time of the apostles of who the world calls Jesus Christ in the life and times of the man uh, who the world knows as Jesus Christ. You guys may say Yeshua. I know him as Yahweh Shai. And that's something that needs to be put on the table. Like the idea that the so-called New Testament, again, is not the New Testament or the New Covenant because the New Covenant is a very specific thing that is prophesied about in what we call the Old Testament or the Old Covenant in the book of Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. And it states that the Most High God will literally place the Torah in the hearts and the minds and in the inward parts of the children of Israel, right? So the idea that now in the New Testament, which they're misnomering as a collection of books, is now applicable for all human beings, right? We're of the, of the uh, school of thought that the Most High God is the God of Israel, right? He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Holy One of Israel. He sent He sent his son, right? And I'm not sure if you guys believe it or not. He sent his son who the world knows as Jesus Christ, we know as Yahweh Shai, to die for the sins of of the nation of israel and for the nation of israel only um and then the new testament will be implemented pursuant to prophecy at the return of the messiah so want to lay that basic framework uh, out first just so you guys understand where i'm coming from um and then we can you know move along in the dialogue i think the um the personal relationship that each one of us can have with a spirituality has no question we we have to understand that believing is not a question of uh, believing based on identity it's not a question of fight of or question of approval it's a collection of historical aspect personal view and freedom from my corner, when I try to understand the historical aspect of religion, mm -hmm. I do see some aspect of um, of uh, what people call religion or spirituality, which are not so meaningful. Mm -hmm. For me, no, it's it's it looked like easy to say that uh, we can build spirituality and you can have a religion. But nothing can speak more than the actions of men when it comes about the truth of their believing. Mm -hmm. So when in 1480, the Portuguese mm -hmm. arrived on the coast of Congo, mm -hmm. they found a whole civilization, tribes, kingdom with 12 tribes, using working and the the so-called invader they say we never saw such su structured society mm -hmm. with nobility when they decided in uh, one day to transform what was the congolese tradition to transform it to sorcery to call what was the inner letter the inner work of the priest mm -hmm. they called them witchcraft mm -hmm. to transform that mindset of object they called it paganism mm -hmm. this is also a, fa a face of christianity mm -hmm. from the african corner we do see we do know that the tradition mm -hmm. was there way before the time that the Christians arrived. Mm -hmm. For us, even though, even though with the time, with the years, with the centuries, Christianity will become the first religion in Central Africa, we know that this is a slow work about raising and bringing people to alienation about their own identity. Mm -hmm. This is a general view about what is the relationship between African Christianity. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes about the books and the approval of what is what, 
-hmm. For me, we cannot go on that page without opening the gates of Sumerian aspect. Because Christianity didn't brought anything, it didn't create any concept. It mm -hmm. was all heritage from different culture, especially the Egyptian one. Mm -hmm. What was in Egypt was what was in the, the pantheon of Egyptian, was the pantheon of Sumerians. Mm -hmm. In Africa, it's not about saying what you can do, what you understand. It's about explaining the invisible word. Mm -hmm. To explain, and the explanation has to be confirmed at different level. I used to be a pastor. I was born in a Christian family. Mm -hmm. And my, my journey in Christianity was even not a question because you were born like this and you grew up like that. But when you start to, to dig, to ask one question, what is the purpose? What is the purpose of a religion? Mm -hmm. If I'm not seeing my identity in my religion, we have a problem. I would if agree. The real situation is that spirituality stands on two legs. Mm -hmm. We need tradition and we need religion. Tradition being the inner and hidden aspect of that spirituality and religion being that daily life that should be connected to that tradition. Mm -hmm. And when we see that from that corner, we do understand that Christianity didn't make any place for African countries. Mm -hmm not make any place. So yeah. I understand uh -huh. that uh, in that position, some people will, in their corner, when they have more power, choose or not to consider this book or that book. It's their, mm -hmm. it's, it's their history. I don't mm -hmm. need to convince them. Mm -hmm. I just need to be sure about what I'm building and where I'm going. And this is, for me, the main problem today. People want to convince the other about what is the truth. But the truth mm -hmm. doesn't work like that. Truth come with time. Mm -hmm. If you know that you are doing something real, mm -hmm. don't run. Don't scream. Don't shout out. Wait. Time will confirm what you are doing. So for me, I'm Jew. When I say I'm Jew, uh, including the older definition, I'm built in the Israeli spirituality. I use the word Jew knowing and understanding that not everybody know the difference between Israelite and Jew and the term comes in the in the latest latest uh, 19th centuries and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. We do have a whole tradition about knowing that we are also are a part of the lost tribes studying mm -hmm. in Africa or a part of some of those people who were with uh, Moshe himself when he was king of Kush, or some of the people who received the knowledge of Ashikarosh uh, Baruchu from Yosef when they made the conversion in Egypt. We know that we have different branches. Mm -hmm. So this is my identity. And what we try to do with Rabbi Mordechai is to say to the people, the purpose is not to change the other. The purpose is to empower what you are. And to understand more that history speaks for you, ethnology speaks for you, anthropology speaks for you, and even the strategy you will do in the way you will study all the texts which are to challenge you will be a way to empower your identity. This is my position. Chief Rabbi Mordechai, you have, your, you have the, the speech if you want. Uh, so, I, I, real quick, Mordecai, I definitely wanted to uh, just kind of address some of the things that you said because I, I agreed with a lot of what you said. Right? Um, me myself, I like I said, I was raised Christian. You was raised, you were raised Christian, and you know that Christianity does not uh, it doesn't leave much space for b so called black identity uh, in it because when we understand basically you know, similar to what you were uh, addressing the portuguese encountered the people of the congo between 1480 1482 right and of course they came with christianity and they looked at the things that you guys were doing as pagan but but when you really dive into it christianity at at its core is paganism is mixed and riddled with paganism and i of course you know so-called african-american you know descendant of the transatlantic slave trade my people were taken from the west shores of africa right and we were also introduced to christianity all right s s of course between 14 uh 82 uh 14, around 1480 to 1619 right and even and even uh further right 
So Christian, like you said, Christianity doesn't leave room for our identity. It's being taught to us from a Western European Caucasian lens where this figure who we all know and agree that existed, that people know now today known as Jesus Christ, right? He's being portrayed as a white boy, right? But in all actuality, when we look at the description, we look at the description of his people who he was born amongst. These were people of color and not so-called Caucasian people. So I definitely agree with that um, sentiment very heavily. Um, and it, a lot of the things that you were saying reminded me of several scriptures that, you know, I would be remiss if we didn't read them. So um, first, um, I think of the book of Psalms, chapter uh one uh psalms 83 right where it says i'll read it in english and the kjb it says keep thou uh keep thou not silence O god hold not thy peace and be not oh still O god for lo thine enemies make a tumult and they that hate thee have lifted up the head they have taken crafty counsel against thy people who's god's people the israelites are his people and have consulted against thy hidden ones they have said come let us cut them off from being a nation so when Europeans interacted with our people, whether it's in the Congo, whether it's in Nigeria, Senegal, or or Benin, Togo, Ghana, all these various places where we as the so-called African-American diaspora uh, go back to, and also our brothers and sisters in the Caribbean, they stripped our language from us. They stripped our culture. They stripped, a, they stripped our, our, our sense of self, right, from us. And again, the scriptures speak of this, right? It says, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against the, and it lists the, the, the conspirators. And the first conspirator is the tabernacles of Edom. The Edomites, who I would understand to be today, are Caucasian people. So-called Caucasian people are the descendants of the Edomites, right? They're the main ones who perpetrated the the whitewashing of biblical characters. They are the main ones who took our culture, our history, which is found in the Torah to not, um, and, and applied it to all people. Um, so that, that, that was definitely uh, a scripture that came to mind. You, you said that they, when it came to the Congo, they looked at the things that the priests were doing as witchcraft. Right. Um, and it's quite interesting because when you really go into Christianity, it's a riddle, of course, with witchcraft, with a lot of the sacraments and things of nature uh, of that nature that they engage in. Um, but it makes me think of Deuteronomy 33, where Moses blesses the children of Israel. And when he speaks specifically to Levi, which would be the priest, this is what he says. Deuteronomy 33 and 8. And of Levi, he said, let thy thummim and thy urim be with the Holy One. Right? The thummim and the urim were two tools that the Levites used to communicate with the spiritual realm, right? To, to get messages and, and omens and things of that nature. So from the outside looking in, that could look like witchcraft, right? To, to, to the untrained eye, right? It says, let thy omen and thy thumb be with the Holy One, whom, did it, uh, whom thou didst prove at Massa, and with whom thou didst strive at the wars of Meribah, Right? Uh, and then again, another scripture that came to mind was Psalms 147, verses 19 through 20. It says that he, of course, talking about the Most High, showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them, praise ye the Lord. So, of course, when the conqueror, right, the Edomites came and conquered our people and stole us from our homes in, in Africa, West Central Africa, and brought us to the to the americas and enslaved us and cut us off from being a people of course they're coming with our book and they're t completely ripping it out of, uh, out of context completely taking things that were not shown unto them applying them to all peoples all right and just bastardizing what's written in the text so i think that's very indicative of of christianity because we have to ask ourselves as so-called african americans as peoples uh uh you know Melanated people who who come from Africa, Christianity was introduced to us by who, for the most part. Unless you're talking about Ethiopians, who you know, Christianity has been in Ethiopia for you know thousands of years, right? I think it goes as far back as like the sixth, the fourth, fifth, sixth century CE. Outside of there, right? West Africans were not introduced to Christianity until the white man came and, and conquered us in the 1400s. 
right? And it again, that Christianity has taken the Bible, right? Whether Old Testament, New Testament, whatever, whatever classification you want to uh, pinpoint, and they twisted what those scriptures are saying and use them to justify their uh, their treatment of us and their enslavement of us, right? When in all actuality, pursuant to Psalms 147, verses 19 through 20, God did not show his word unto them. So how can they then give us the understanding of the Bible or the words that's found in the Torah to not, if God never showed it to them? And this is why when we look at Christianity, we have to understand that Christianity is a cancer, is problematic to the to the way of thinking for our people, right? And we have to remove ourselves from this white supremacist construct. So yeah, it's on on you, brother Mordecai. Yeah, no, was, um, you know, I think that the idea is to say that, I mean, this 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 conversation right here is, you know, people looking for truth, deciphering what is true and what's not, you know, in a construct that was not designed for us to be able to do that, right? Mm -hmm. And so the the navigational path that each of us, you know, had to take or have to take to get to that place of, of ultimate truth, you know, should not be something that that separates us, right? Meaning that like, okay, well, we're all making it out of, you know, we're all trying to decolonize our way of thinking, right? Mm -hmm. Like all of us, that's what we're trying to do. Now, for me, I the Orthodox Jewish path, right? Was was the path that I went, right? And 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 and, and you know, Rabbi Pinkas, you know, went on on his path in, in, the, in the same direction. And, you know, you went on the path of, you know, the, the Hebrew Israelites, but, the point is, is saying, I think our discussion is like, what type of, what type of truths do we need to bring to the conversation mm -hmm. to improve the situation for everybody, right? Because it doesn't mean that you have to be like me in order to benefit from what I've learned, right? Mm -hmm. and, and vice versa, right? Because we're hearing you out, right? So it's just saying that the, the, the idea of moving forward is, is being able to say that, you know what? where's the ultimate wisdom at mm -hmm. not saying if it's in one particular place or another particular place but where is it at and, and and what what types of things can i obtain to improve my quality of life within within my place not saying i have to abandon where i'm from but within my place and i think that's kind of like a, a foundational point in that in that discussion yeah for sure that th that also makes you think of uh, of a particular uh couple of scriptures mm -hmm. now that you say that mordecai um, and then I, and after that, I do want to ask uh, uh, Brother Pinkas uh, a, a question about, you know, Congo and things of that nature. Um, I think about, you know, when we talk about truth, what what is the truth, right? Well, when I look at the, the Tanakh, right, Psalms 119 and verse 142, let me sh share the screen real quick. It says, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth, right? So the Torah is the truth, right? It's the standard of truth, the standard of what's right and what's wrong, right? And the children of Israel made a covenant with the Most High God, right? I know his name to be Yahweh, right? He, again, made that covenant with us, and he gave us a law as a heritage, as an inheritance for us to pass down to our children from generation to generation through Moses. Right. And that is the standard of truth. Right. Another witness to the fact that the law, the Torah is the truth uh, is uh, Mike, uh, Malachi, I believe the second chapter. Right. Malachi two. This is a rebuke of the of the priests of the Levites. Right. The same tribe that Moses came from. It says, um, I started verse five. It says my covenant was with him of life and peace. Why? Because the law is the standard of life. Right. It's the ways of of, of life. Right. Um, it says, and I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was was afraid before my name. Right. With being charged with keeping these commandments, these do's and don'ts that our God gave us, we have to have 
a level of fear and reverence for him that, hey, if I don't do what he says do, there's consequences. If I do what he says do not do, there's consequences. And that's what we as uh, as a people have been disconnected from. We've been discontinued from our heritage, our heritage being the law, the Torah, right, which is supposed to be our way of life and it's supposed to be for our betterment, right? It goes on to say, uh, verse 6, the law of truth was in his mouth. And iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and did turn many away from iniquity. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. So the tribe of Levi, right? The priests, right? They're supposed to be teaching the law, right? They're supposed to be, they, they, they had that, that highest mantle. Not saying that the rest of the tribe should not be teaching the law because we are charged in the law to teach the laws to our children. And then, of course, then our children have to pick up that mantle and pass it on to their children. Again, it's our heritage. But we as so-called African-Americans, so-called black people of the diaspora, whether we're here in the Americas, whether we're in the Caribbean, the South Central America, right? W one thing that we've been missing, right? We've tried Christianity. Some of us have tried Islam. Some of us have tried, uh, you know, various other religions or paths, right? The one thing we have not tried in, in recent years is keeping God's Torah, keeping the law, right? And the problem with that is the law is supposed to be the ways of life. And we look at our communities and look at, for instance, I live in Philadelphia. For the past five six years we've averaged about 500 murders a year and let's be honest 99.9 percent .9 of those murders it's probably another black man killing another black man right it's because there's a deep-rooted hatred that we have for each other we've been taught to hate our brother and look at them as ops right but we forgive and forget what the oppressor has done to us right through colonization through enslavement Right. And so he could walk in our neighborhoods, which he's gentrifying at all hours of the night and nothing will happen to him. But if I'm in the wrong neighborhood, a brother who looks just like me. Right. Guess what? He's going to press me. He's going to to, to come against me because, again, we have that hatred for our own people. And again, when we look at God's law, which is the way of truth, we are told to not foster hatred in our hearts, in our minds for our brothers not to bear grudges against one another, right? And that we must love our neighbor, which is the children of our people. This is why God's law is so important for the lives of so-called Black Hispanics and Native Americans. And as it, we're looking at the church, the so-called Black church, that's in, you have multiple churches on every block, in, in every hood, in every city. And guess what? There's still crime. There's still all types of nonsense going on. Our people are still killing each other. Why? Because the church is not teaching our people the, the benefit of keeping God's law. It's a benefit to not hating your brother. It's a benefit to not spreading gossip and slander against your brother. The law says not to. It's a benefit to not uh, holding a grudge against your brother. It's a benefit of not selling poison or drugs, which is a form of, uh, of witchcraft, to your brother, to your sister. And this is why we as so-called African-Americans and the rest of our people in the diaspora um, of the transatlantic slave trade, we have to come back to understanding that we are the children of Israel, right? And we have to come back and keep the Most High God's law because we can see in the law where it outlines that if we don't keep this com these commandments, all these calamities, all these curses, all these punishments will come upon us and pursue us and overtake us, follow us wherever we go and be a sign on our selves and our children forever as long as we're not keeping those laws so uh i know that was a little a little uh winded but uh it I, like i said i would be remiss if i didn't bring that that point home but uh brother pencott i wanted to ask you because i'm not too familiar with the congo i i know i i've heard about how there were tri different tribes that were uh considered to be jews in the congo prior to the portuguese coming uh, I'm, I'm familiar with the Igbo, the, the Yoruba, the e, uh, the Ewe, the Bakongo, all these different tribes. That, uh, what's another one I can think of? The Mandinko, so forth and so forth, and other West African uh, countries. But I'm not too sure about 
who you would say what what tribes in the Congo would you say are are descendants of Israel? So uh first, what tribe are, are, are you part of and what other tribes would you say in the Congo would be Israelites for the viewing audience? Before I answer to that question, I will get to um, some point that you you brought up. Even if uh, not many people know about Congo, but we do know a lot about the others because we we have always the position of looking at the others, why people don't consider us, um, let's say, the African history. We have to know that Bantus, the, the, if you come in Africa and you ask to call to Cameroonian, to Ghanaian, to the one of Ivory Coast, Nigeria, you ask to them where is the center place of the Bantus people? Where did the Bantus start to be spread out in Africa? They will all tell you Congo. Congo is the mother place. And uh, most of the people who say, yeah, I come from Nigeria, you have to know that if you are from Nigeria, you are from Congo, the region. Because the name Bantus will substitute originally the name Congo. Because at the time, we used to call ourselves Congo with K, not mm -hmm. Bantus. But this is just an example. What you do is very important because you, you, you bring information. You try to... To, to, to say that what you explain, you have sources, you have roots. And uh, this is the aspect of what we call in the Torah intelligence. Intelligence is a must. It's something that should always be brought with sources and represent, references. But intelligence without wisdom can be, you can, you can turn around and not finding the, 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 the path that should bring you to another level. What is the, the other level? It's what we call the Torah Aleph, the first Torah. The Torah what was given to Moshe in the Art Sinai, the Mount Sinai, he brought them. That Torah, not talking about what you and me are discussing now, there's no death, there's no impurity, there's no rape, there's no war. Why? Because when they received that Torah, impurity of death was removed from the earth. So the sages of Israel, they asked, what was written inside? What type of laws they had to keep? They said they had to keep the same laws that Adam had to keep in the Gan Eden, in the Garden of Eden. What does it mean? It means that if you and me, we talk about lies, and truth, we are way far away from the first Torah. So what happened? We do need to put wisdom to our intelligence in order to know how to find out the path to go higher. And that wisdom is what we call the tradition aspect. In the Jews world, we call it Kabbalah, Sod, secret of Torah meaning the things that you cannot write because the ones you write them it's finished you give time and place for interpretations this is the man's nature that's why the biggest code that was given to us by the sage of the mishnah is to say look you want to see peace you need two things you need truth and justice so many people are claiming that they want to promote their religion, their spirituality, in order to bring peace in people's life, to bring peace in the, some area, some country. But where is the truth? Where is the justice? Meaning, you want to find the truth? Let's see if the place where the truth comes brings justice also. How can I bring truth? It's not about only say truth is what I understand. No, truth is something which will be always surrounding my wisdom. What is the difference between wisdom and intelligence is that wisdom explains to you the roots of what you're saying with your intelligence in the invisible world. This is what we had in Congo with the tradition. We knew how to understand the wisdom of nature, the wisdom of invisible world, because it's not because it's invisible that there is not the laws. There are laws also. And that very specific laws they are rooted in that very first Torah. 
So the tradition, what they call youth witchcraft, the work we did the last five years by opening our yeshiva in Jerusalem, it was to show to people that stop to say that African tradition used to be witchcraft or paganism. It was nothing more, nothing less than Mishnah life. What is Mishnah? The fundamental text that was given to Adam and what will be given also to Moshe. This is the oral Torah. Oral Torah doesn't mean that it's the way you interpret the scripture. No, this is interpretation. The oral Torah is the secret of understanding what is written. Why? Because when you know what's going on on this earth, what's happened with some people who every generation they wake up with the desire to enslave the other. I'm not talking only about the black people. And no, I'm talking about any type of people who suffered from genocide or suffered from terrorism. If you see people coming with the mindset of whipping out another community, another country, another religion, no matter what, we have to understand that that mindset is still working and is as a root and as a meaning. Based on that, the question is not to say what we understand or not. The question is to say what we should do today to be able to bring peace tomorrow. To claim what we are doesn't change anything because if I claim something that still produces some injustice, my claiming are not based on truth and on justice. So I will not create peace. Based on that, what I can say from the, for the moment is like this. The problem with the, with the religion, mainly Christianity and some aspect of Judaism, is that they, turn back, they give their back to the tradition. But the tradition is not the aspect of paganism. No, tradition is the inner aspect, the hidden one that will give explanation about any single action you are doing. One element is the base of all that, is the character trait. Every time you will see someone not able to handle his arrogancy, able to anger his anger, running after pleasure, running, speaking, and running, being sad about what's happening to him, just be sure this one is not built to be the elite of what we call the representative of that spirituality called the truth. So when we are now talking about black people, white people, we have to add something else. The sages will say like this, the man is not the envelope you are seeing. The real man is the blood inside because the blood is the soul. So the soul is the man. So it's strange because the DNA, which is in the blood, this is exactly what produced the aspect of what I am now. So why are you saying that this is not me and the real me is inside? We understand something here very deep is that the blood type is the real identity of the man. So if you start to, to identify people that what they are representing from the external aspect, you will have a problem. Some black people will feel inside that they are more Caucasian. Why? Because you don't know their blood type. Some white people, they will start to feel African. They will dress like African. They will move everywhere if they, they want, except in Europe and America. They go to Africa. They will be dressed like African. Where it's come from? Sometimes they fight more for you to write than you who are really representing that type of of, uh, of identity. So the questions are deep, very deep, and wisdom have to be spread out here before, in front of all, all the audience. We have to bring wisdom. To say Caucasian, to say Edomite, we are talking about blood. That's why that area of science is so hidden, and that you and me, we can even not know what is our blood type. We use the tool of saying, ah, we look like this, so we are that. No. The Torah said the man is the blood. So if you think that you're talking to Pinchas, you're not talking to Pinchas, you're talking to the envelope Pinchas. But the blood type is the real man. So I will say to conclude, 
about the, this this topic. This is the way we grew up in Africa. We grew up with the rules of understanding that when someone know, you go to his feet and you try to grab all the details, not about what he is saying, more about what he is not saying. And that wisdom comes first with the fixing of all the bad character traits. Humility has to be standing. Humbleness has to be there. Silence has to be there. Not running after pleasure has to be there. And happiness, not happiness, fake happiness. Real happiness about what you possess has to be there. Congo is, was the place I was born. I grew up there. At 10, I arrived in France. I stood in France, do, did my PhD, converted to Judaism there. So I know what is European. I know what is Africa. I also was inspired by American culture. And I was lucky to meet many American, African American in Jerusalem, in the yeshiva we opened and we studied together. And I understood the new mindset about what the black people were living there. And it's changed. It brought to me more definition, more understanding about that aspect. And this is the key. If we want to be able to build gap and to work together, we have to take time to listen to the other, to understand the base of that. And I do believe that what we have now today in Africa is a must if we want to build something solid in terms of spirituality, religion, and tradition to change or to bring peace to the world. So, okay. No, I, I hear you for sure. Um, but uh, can you can you give me a list of the tribes in? I I I would not. I wouldn't say that every tribe in Nigeria are descendants of Israelites. Same way I would say that not everyone in Ghana are Israelites. Same way I would say that not every single so-called African American is an Israelite, because. Uh, we understand that according to the Torah, we declared our pedigree, our, our Yalad, um, pursuant to the house of our fathers, right? So, for instance, right, Moses, his children, right, their mother, Ethiopian, but they're considered of the tribe of Levi because Moses is of the tribe of Levi. King Rehoboam, his mother was an Ammonite. His father's King Solomon of the tribe of Judah. He was a Jew, who, who was the king of Judah, right? So here in the in the Amer in, in America, we have individuals, all right. For instance, uh, T and Tamara Mari, they're they're seemingly African American. Their mothers are so called African American, but their fathers are white men, so they would not be Israelites, right? So same thing, you know, with everyone else. You know, in Africa, right, in uh, in the Caribbean, in, in North Central, uh, North Central and South America, right. Not every single one would necessarily be an Israelite. So, what tri tribes in the Congo would you say, by and large, are descendants of the Israelites? That that question is the the best illustration of what I tried to introduce just before. The biggest mistake that was introduced in our mindset is to bring down spirituality to DNA and biologic things. I explain myself. All well, I'm, not, the, I'm not, well, I'm not talking about DNA or, or, or I'm, any I'm, 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 I'm going on your point. I'm just, build, just building the, the basis. All the people who have wisdom in the, this world we know about the transmigration of the souls. We know about reincarnation, what is called Gilgulim. Mm -hmm. So the question is, why it's written in the Torah that Yaakov said, if you are not keeping my Torah, you are not my son. Meaning that the definition of being an Israelite is not about DNA. It's not about what you are what you represent in your physicality. It's about what you care, what you build, and what you bring every single day in your spirituality. And this aspect, people always escape. 
because this aspect puts you in front of the terrible truth. And I can talk about that because I spent 12 years of my life in Israel fighting people, telling them, look, if you are screaming that you are Jew, it's not about being Jew, it's about keeping the Torah. If you're not keeping the Torah, sorry, you are not there at all. So the identity of Israelites comes with the, the high representativity of the spirituality. So that's why we have now today, in, even in the African community, in the African, African American community, people considering that, that being, having the shape and the aspect or having the roots of some tribes give to you a definitive identity. No. The Israelite soul that explained one of the biggest sages of the Torah, the Ben Ishrai, said, was built after all the other souls. It's not something that you carry when you have no tools being able to hold it down. What are the tools? Practice. What is to practice? Keep the secret laws that allow you to be always connected to that root. Second thing try to be someone with the best character trait as possible. Every time you see there's two things missing, even if it look like, it's not. So I'm the first to apply it in Congo with the one who say, we, the back Congos, we are Jews, we are Israel. I say, no, you're not. If you are not able to be the representative of God on earth, you are not. It's not about DNA. Is about to be a fighter, not in the way of killing the other, in the way of being, carrying every single day of your life on you, the proof that you are not living according to the materiality of this world, but you live according to the truth of the invisible world. And that come, came with a lot of responsibility. So for me, so, 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 say, yeah. So, so are you saying that if you're, if, Let's say someone is a literal physical descendant of, of of Jacob, but he's not keeping the is it the oral law? Then he's not a Jew, or if he's not if he's not he's, keeping the Torah, the written he's law, not, he's not keeping the Torah. Torah so comes written with, Torah. Yeah. So if no, he's not he, keeping a, so so, no, uh, so uh, there is a there is no difference between written and oral Torah. It's the same. It's like to say. No, my, my name is. Uh, I would disagree with that. I, I, I would disagree. The, there's yeah, many right. things. There's many things in the oral law or the Mishnah that contradict the Torah. Many no. things. You you think that it's contradict because maybe you didn't took the time to ask to the one who think that it's not contradict why they don't think. Sometimes you just have to ask to people opinion. But so, so let me ask you a question. Does does does, does uh. What's the word? Brit Mala or, or, or Mazita Bepe, which is found in the Mishnah, oral yeah. circumcision. Yeah. Is that found in the Torah? Of course. W where in the Torah is oral circumcision found? Do you read Hebrew? Yes, I read Hebrew. Can you show me where? So, what? what, what, you, what? Know the, do you do the, you know the Gematriot? The what? The Gematriot. Gemat Gematria? Yeah. yeah. No, I don't deal with Jamash, but I deal with the okay, word let's get on into the something. So, okay, so so where what book chapter and verse in the Torah? Let me explain, explain to you something. It's like this. When you have a written thing, let's say you have kids, you want to pass to them secret. That secret will not be written. Here is the secret of that. You read something and in your daily life with them, you will explain to them how to understand this aspect. About the Brit Milah, it's very simple. My question, before you ask to me where it's written, I ask to you, what is the secret of Brit Milah? What does it mean? What do you need to remove that part? What the purpose? Because God said so. No, thank you. Everybody read that. I want you to talk with the wisdom. What is the secret? If we are not able to explain, how can we keep it for a thousand years? We have to be able to explain the secret behind. I, see, I'm not other, under the idea that there's necessarily all these secrets behind God saying X, Y, Z. Like, for instance, God says the swine is unclean to you. Thou shalt not eat it, right? 
I know that swine are they're unclean. They're 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 they are garbage disposal. They they have tons of of parasites, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have to go into the why he told me to do something. Just the fact that he told me to do something or not to do something. So God told Abraham, "This is a sign between me and you, a the sign of the covenant between me and you, and yeah. all your males on the eighth day must be circumcised, right? Must be." If you buy anyone, if you buy any any slaves, they mm -hmm. have to be circumcised. Mm -hmm. If slaves are born in your house, they have to be circumcised on the eighth day, right? I don't necessarily have to get into the why. It's just a matter of the, he said it, I'm going to do it. It's a matter of the obedience. So, so it's, it's but, meant but, that in your, in your daily life, if the laws comes out from in the United States, you should walk on one leg two days. You will never ask. You will do one leg. You I, do the I'm, not, I, I, I'm not. I'm not concerned about what America is telling me to do. I'm. No. My only concern is about what it, it, my not, God told me to do. Because no, you cannot say that. Why because, cannot? Because it, because my it's God problem. is the only one that has. My God is the only one who I care about opinion. Right? He said, "Don't do this." Guess what? I'm not going to do it. If he no, said because, this, I'm going to do it. So you, you say you say something like this. You say that God told me not to do that. I don't do that. So two options. Or we go on that mindset so I can follow you. Or we try to find comparative situation to see if that logicality stand. Because if you do something in, in that your relationship with God, you say, he say, I do. Okay. It means that it's a mindset. So that mindset should be also be seen in your other interaction when it comes about you dealing with someone who is superior to you. Because God in that relationship is superior to you. Say, do you do? Yes. So me, I need to understand the dynamic of what you are doing. To, when you use the word secret, secret is not to go in something mystical. Secret means I want to understand what is behind because if i don't explain one day it will be lost okay so what's what's the secret and where and where is the 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 using of one's I, mouth I would, on a day, on an eight day old baby's penis in circumcision where is that in the torah i see it in the mishnah i don't see it in the torah so i would love for you to show me in the torah all right put your mouth on a baby's penis that's okay. what i want you to show me one more time i build first of all it's like this when you study, the purpose is not to get the answer. The purpose is to get the path which brings you to the answer. Because like this, you will be able to explain. Second point. When it comes about understanding the dynamic and the secret of the Brit Mila, you said you quoted eight days. But if I see, Ishmael did at 13. Abraham did at 100. So what the difference? Are they the same? You have eight it, days. That, that 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 right there is 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 not is a kind of a moot point because again God's giving the command to Mo, to Abraham, hey, cir circumcise yourself. Abraham was eight days old when God said that. Ishmael was older than eight days when when God said that. But Thank any you. child that but any so from that day forward, any child born in Abraham's house, born yes. of his family, right, yes. has to be circumcised. Any male has to be circumcised. On the eighth day, the reason why, on the scientific level, is because at that point the baby's uh, circulatory system is able to develop enough platelets so that it can clot properly, so that the baby's not bleeding out, right? When you cut into his foreskin, that's the scientific reason why. But that's that's cool and dandy. Again, I'm trying to find out I where in that. that commandment and where I'm, elsewhere I'm, we I'm see circumcision being, being prescribed to us, where is mouths having to be part of that process? Where does that I'm come going, in? I'm going to answer, but before I give you the answer, I need to give you some tool to understand my answer. Because if I don't give you the tools, you will say, no, it's not written in my Bible. Okay, what will be the purpose of the discussion? So you are just confirmed something. Someone had to do it at 100, someone at 13, someone at eight days. So it means that something is very important with that organs. That organs, what we know from some aspect of the secret is like this. He grew up 
with the first sin of Adam. Meaning, that member never exists. That member comes on man's um, brit mila. Are you saying member? Are you talking about the foreskin? Yeah. That foreskin came on the member when Adam sins. It's so not, you're saying that Adam was already circumcised, and when he sinned, he now was he grows the circumcised like some, some kids today. In many kids in the Jewish community are born circumcised. What do you mean born not, circumcised? Like they yeah. came out the womb circumcised? Yeah. 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 I, I, I have a hard time believing that to be true. true. First and foremost, the, re the reason why I have a hard time believing that to be true is because you, you so can have a hard time, but one of my kids was born like this, so I don't know why I will uh, I will say that. So you're you're you you have a child that was born without foreskin. Yeah. Again, I have a hard time believing that. Why so should what I was the point of God, God saying circumcise him on the eighth day? How can no, that child be circumcised not, any day if he's not, already born without a fourth skin? It's it's tell you something else. It's tell you that everything's come with the way you connect with your wife when you bring that soul down. There are rules. You cannot do uh you cannot have a union with your wife without knowing the secret of the things also. Meaning, for example, you have to wait the night of Shabbat. Not every day, not everywhere, not with the light. You have to wait specific moment. There is a whole preparation. All these things come with the tools. So when you talk about, yeah, when do I use to do the math? But I need to explain to you five years of limud, of studying before I get to the question. Because if you even not understand what is the secret of Connection the issue between with that, brother and class is that you're going to lose me and anyone else who's who will watch this if you get run me down five years of preparation to get to an answer. That's that's just that that's just not you know sustainable, right? It's if, if you ask me a question, right, I should be able to give a, pre a precise no. and concise no. answer, no. right? An explanation. I should no. be able to do so if I have true wisdom. Yes. We have, but, we have, but, 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 but we have, I, I really just want to know where in the Torah, in the in the, the five books of Moses, is it's like this. It's put like your this. mouth on a baby's penis. It's That's like what I this. want to know. It's like this. You want that answer, but you are not ready to receive the tool to understand that answer. Meaning you don't want my answer. You want to prove what you think. If you want my answer, you will be patient. You will let I me do want your answer, but I will I will I do want you to I don't I don't need to have five a five year breakdown for, for before I get to the answer. It's like this, that five years. To be honest with you, brother Pencos, I still haven't even gotten the answer of what tribes in the Congo would you say are Israelites. I haven't even still I still haven't gotten that answer. I, I give that question. I give the answer. I say if you go on the tribes level, telling the gen the genetical things, you don't doing you are not doing anything. People need to understand that without spirituality, you are not representing any identity. So you're telling me that uh, so, that someone who a Moabite, a Moabite can be spiritually keeping the law in X, Y, Z, and he's now a Jew. He's now an Israelite. He's not keeping the laws. No, you're, so no. This is what let me let me rephrase. So you're telling me with that understanding that a Moabite, someone who descended from the man named Moab, right? If he keeps the Torah, yeah. He is a Israelite. A Moabite were allowed to convert ten generations after they went out in Egypt. So what's the problem now? I, I no no I, I that that's not in the Torah. It literally says that they cannot enter into the congregation forever. It literally says forever. Now we have let let's talk about it the says that twenty three. He can not enter the congregation forever. Let's talk about the general mindset. So let's say you receive the keys of the word to bring peace. The peace you will bring, for who is that peace? Only for people who are like you or it's for hold the word? That, that has nothing to do with, with the price of tea in China. I'm, I, like, we're lit I'm not talking about peace on earth because there's not going to be peace on earth until the real Jews, the real Israelites are in the I'll land of Israel. I have no problem problem. with that point. I, I'm just asking you a question. You don't answer to my question. You are, you, you are, you have all the Israelites with you. You have all the keys that you need, and you can make, perform the perfect work. I cannot. I me. I cannot bring peace on earth. I, I cannot. According to prophecy, I cannot. Me personally, me and my brothers here who are Hebrew Israelites, we cannot bring peace on earth. 
peace will not come onto earth until the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, pursuant to Daniel the seventh chapter and Daniel the twenty second chapter, Daniel the second chapter is actualized when when the God of heaven establishes a kingdom that shall not be destroyed. I, that process really I can't I can't do that. Right. Only only way I can help in doing that is by returning and teaching our people uh, enough of us to return and keep God's commandments so that we can see uh, that. I have a question. Right. How the process will happen? Say what now? How that process will happen? How will what process happen? You talk about earth? the kingdom of God. Yes. On earth. Yeah, very simple. Right. We look, at Deuteron we look at Deuteronomy, the 13th, the third, the 30th chapter. Right. Let me go there real quick. Right, so let me put my uh screen up. Right, so check this out. We see here in Deuteronomy 30, it says, And it shall come to pass when all these things come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God have driven thee. So, wherever the children of Israel are scattered, it's going to come a point in time where we're going to remember or call to mind the blessings and the curses, the curses which are a sign upon us that we are the israelites right it says and shall return unto the lord thy god and shall obey his voice according to all that i command thee this day what did moses command us this day what we find here in the torah right that thou and thy children with all thy heart with all thy soul that then at that point when we do that that then the lord thy god will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all nations whither the Lord thy God has scattered thee, right? I'll jump down to verse uh, six. It says, and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, that thou mayest live, right? So God, this, this coincides with the new covenant where God will circumcise our hearts, put his law in our inward parts, and we won't sin, Right? Then it goes on and says, and the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. So this happens, right, when, again, the Most High God returns the children of Israel from all the lands in which they've been scattered, right? And that happens to coincide with Daniel, the second chapter, and Daniel, the, uh, the seventh chapter. So in Daniel 2 and 44, right, it says, and in the days of these kings... So there's other kings ruling on the earth. Shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Other people will not rule on the earth, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Right. Who, who are the people who are going to rule? I'll tell you, Daniel 7 and verse 18. It says, but the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever, right? And who's going to have the dominion? Who's going to be the king? It's going to be the Davidic Messiah, the son of man, as we see here in Daniel 7 and 13. It says, I saw in the night visions, behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days, right? The most high God, right? It says, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him, who? The son of man dominion and glory in the kingdom that all people nations languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away in his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed so this indestructible kingdom that god's going to establish he's going to give it to the son of man that we see here in james 7, um, 7 and 13 right and then we see subsequently that the saints which are the israelites we see that in psalms 50 and 5 gather all my saints all those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Those that made a covenant with God by sacrifice are the Israelites. So those are the saints. The saints will take the kingdom. They will have possession of the kingdom with their king, their one king, the Davidic Messiah, and they're going to possess the kingdom forever and ever. And it's at that point when there will be peace on earth, right? When the children of Israel are ruling the entire earth and all nations, peoples, and tongues are serving the Israelites. In order for that to be actualized, a, a remnant of the children of Israel that have been predestined to do so returns to the Most High God and keeps the Torah. That's when this will be actualized. 
But me, myself, and all my brothers and my friends and family, right, even us three right here, we collectively right now cannot bring peace on earth until the time that this prophecy comes to pass. We can't make it happen. The most high God has to make it happen. Can I just make one? I just want to, before the Rob, uh, I just, before the Rob speaks, I just want to make one, one point. So <clears throat> in terms of your two questions, you asked a specific question about the tribes in Congo, right? Mm -hmm. And which one of the tribes in the Congo are, would you say are, are descendants of the Israelites? Right? Yes. And so the Rob's yes. question back to you is saying in essence that there's many different tribes in Congo today, there's different customs, different, you know, uh, uh, traditions, different things like this. He's saying, but the way that I would understand who are the ones that are descendants of these tribes, because people have mixed in, there's all types of mixtures, all types of things have happened, some more than less. He's saying by the ones who want to perform the mitzvot. He's not saying anybody random in the continent of Africa, anybody who just wants to do anything is that he's talking about specifically the Congo where there is that history, right? That goes Oh, he, he cut out. I, I, I hear what Mordecai is saying, but the issue with that is that we have this thing here in America called the Hebrew Roots Movement, right? I'm not sure if you heard of it, Brother Pinkhouse, right? Yeah, I heard about it. Right, the Hebrew Roots Movement are predominantly Caucasian people, right? White people who are not the children of Israel, right? You got Asians, you got people of all races and creeds in this Hebrew roots movement that understand who the true Hebrews are, right? And somehow think that they are, they've been given a green pass to, to hitch their wagon to ours, right? And be down and be able to get delivered and saved, right? If they keep the Torah, that's problematic because again, I read at the onset of this uh, dialogue in Psalms 147, 19 through 20, that God, did not show his word unto anyone other than Israel. So it doesn't matter if a someone of another nation wants to follow our ways. That does not make them Israelites. The same way, mm -hmm. so, real quick, uh, Mordecai, the same way when we look at Esther, the eighth chapter, I think it's Esther 8 and 17, it says that the fear of the Jews fell upon all the people, right? And many of the people became Judaized. They started following our ways because they feared what uh, us because of what we had happened to Haman, the Agagite, and the uh, who was an Amalekite, an Edomite, right? So just because uh, someone of another nation wants to follow our ways does not make them an Israelite, right? Because I can see when, when we talk about peace on earth, right? Let's look at Isaiah two real quick, right? Isaiah the second chapter says something very, very uh, uh, beautiful, right? Isaiah two and one, two and two. It says, and it shall come to pass that in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob. The most high God is still being called the God of Jacob, right? These other nations say, hey, let's go up to Jacob's God's house, right? It says, and he will teach us of his way. So we, Jacob, have to teach the other nations of our ways when this comes to pass, right? And we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, that word is Torah, and the word of the, the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. Meaning the other nations have to get corrected because guess what? They're not going to have their hearts circumcised. They're not going to be in the new covenant where God writes the Torah in the hearts and minds of the Israelites of that remnant, where they won't have to even teach each other to keep the commandments because it will be programmed in us. Right. But we will have to teach the other nations who do not get access to the new covenant the same way they don't have access to our to the current covenant. Right. We have to teach them of our ways. All right. And they have to get rebuked, meaning they're going to mess up. It says, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift a sword against nation, neither shall they learn in a war anymore. The, again, this is the world peace that we're talking about. But guess what? World peace, according to this prophecy, won't be actualized until the kingdom of heaven is established. 
to the kingdom of God, the God, the kingdom that God will establish on the earth, pursuant to Daniel 2 and Daniel 7, there won't be peace on earth. So guess what? There's so many things that have to happen before peace on earth happens, right? We have wars, rumors of wars, right? There's nothing but but the death and destruction going on in the land of Israel, in the promised land, right? Between the state of Israel in Gaza, the Palestinians, right? There's a, a bunch of war and, and death going on in the West Bank. Guess what? According to biblical prophecy, when the children of Israel are in the land of it, the back in the land, there won't be any war. So, so there's a lot of things that has to happen. You're putting a limitation on God when you say that. Say what now? You say you're putting a limitation on God. You're saying that. How am I? Pu I'm not putting a limitation on God. God no, did. did. No, I because, didn't. How? How? Everything that you said needs to happen could happen in a millisecond. And then, and, and, and everything moves on. You, you're putting Mordecai, a Mordecai, more. That's 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 really asinine and really trivial for you to say something like that. Why? Why is that? Because trivial? the Bible is because God's word is very clear. It says that the vision is for an appointed time, right? The vision is yet for an appointed. So why can't it be the next next hour? Huh? Why can't it be because the next that's hour? not how that's not how prophecy works. I, I'll read it. Right here's Habakkuk chapter two and verse two. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. The same way that Habakkuk was given visions, Daniel was given a vision, right? We see that vision in Daniel 7, right? Isaiah is given a vision. We see that in Isaiah 2. All the prophets are given visions, and they wrote them down on paper for us to learn and for us to see to understand as time passes, right? It says, yeah. write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that he uh, read of it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it surely uh, it will surely come. It will not tarry. So God's prophecies that were revealed to the prophets have specific appointed times in the which they will be fulfilled in a particular uh, uh, order. How do you know? You say you don't want to hear about secret. You want God said it's up, and now you talk about time, understanding, prophecy don't work like that. I want to know the dynamic because sometimes you say it's written, you have to apply, and now you're talking about there's a whole way to analyze. So, what is the position? It's, it's very written. simple, right? I, so, yeah. I, I'll be, I, I'll, I'll, I'll lay some things on the table for you, uh, Brother Pinchas, right? I do not adhere to the Mishnah, to the Talmud, to the Gemara. I don't adhere to any of that because those it's are all tradition, huh? It's not my question. I'm answering your question, right? I don't answer by, by by targeting what I'm what I what I am. Answer by using what you are, but don't say that I, I, I am. So what I am is is someone that that leans on God's word, and God's word was given to men of renown, prophets like Moses, prophets like Isaiah, prophets like Habakkuk. Say say what. Can I ask a question? Do you what do you say when people tell you that all the 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 Torah was a copy past of the Sumerian text, and that Noah it's Gilgamesh? So what do you say? They have to prove it. They have to demonstrate that. And guess what? No one has ever demonstrated that. People say, "Oh, the Ten Commandments was taken from the forty-two laws of my art." When you actually dive into that talking point, no, I'm, I'm not talking about the Ma'at. Ma'at is Egyptians. I understand that. I'm talking I, about something which is way before. And I, you I, have people telling you, look, you have to understand that there is, it's strange how the structure of the Torah is copy past. You have people who study in the Shiva who are scientists and prove all the things. I'm not saying they are wrong or they are right. I'm just telling you. So you're saying that this is the word of God, and the word of it's God the word of, is the word of my God. My God, His name is Yahweh, and His word that, that He has ha, has had published in the earth is found here in the Bible, right? I understand. Before it's not. No, I, I understand. I'm I'm not attacking you. I'm, I'm saying I don't think you're attacking I, me. I want to understand and to find a place of discussion, because even if you have your reference and have mine. We have to understand that at a certain point, there is no contradiction when you are dealing with real spirituality. What does it mean? You said that the prophecy is talking about uh, this happened 
no peace can be put on earth only the Israelite will be in that in that position and so on me when I listen to that position I, it sounds very Christian what in does what it position? mean How, how's that Christian hold on that's that that's, oh, that's, that's actually that's actually very anti-Christian because Christians oh, teach on. that no. God loves everyone no. that the God of the Bible loves everyone it's, and, it's, and Jesus Christ not for everyone my words. That's completely different from Christian my words. let's explain my words it's like this Christianity comes with the mindset of telling people you don't have to do anything. Everything has been done. Where you have you? Where have you? Where, where, and oh, real, real, real quick, you. brother Pentecost, real quick, yeah. right? Where have I given off the 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 energy, right, or the idea that you don't have to do anything? I'm clearly been saying that we have to you come back. It. No, I you did not. No, no, no. Listen, listen to what it's I said. Let me, let me reiterate. Take peace today on earth. You said it. You said no, 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 no. Pen, peace brother Pentecost. Afterward, like this. To die and to wait that next life, life. Brother, uh, you, 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 what you're doing is misconstruing what I'm saying, and no, you're not I'm understanding. Saying, let, let, me, let me, let me, let me clarify for you. Better. Let me I'm clarify for you. Let me clarify for you. Right? Yeah. We, as the children of Israel, right? Again, we we are we all agree that by and large, so-called African Americans are descendants of the children of Israel. Yes. Go on. I, I, I will not say yes till you will not finish all your all your words. I'm, I'm just it's confirming. I'm just confirming everything. that one point. Yes, we we agree with that. That one point, yeah, right? Don't work like this because when you bring you you have to bring a whole body. If I bring a head, I say you know it will be a a, a very a very healthy baby. And after after I bring the legs, I bring all the baby. We'll say yes at the end. So go go ahead. Okay. Hey, okay. Okay. Uh, no 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 problem. Right. It's quite simple. We as the children of Israel, according to biblical prophecy, which God says that the word that cometh forth out of his mouth will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish that in which he desired it to accomplish. So when, if God says that X, Y, Z is going to happen at one at a particular time, guess what? X, Y, Z is going to happen at that particular time, at that appointed time. So pursuant to Deuteronomy 30, the children of Israel must come back to understanding who they are, return to the Lord their God and keep his commandments, that's doing something. That's not just me sitting back with my hands folded. No. I used to be in a Christian church. I did not think that I had to keep God's commandments until I was brought into the understanding that I'm an Israelite and that I'm required to keep God's law. So guess what I started doing? I started keeping God's law. So I'm actively doing something to bring about all right, these things that I want to see in the earth. I want to see my people delivered. God says oh, at the point you. in which we are you delivered, agree. we would have to come back and return. You have one common point. So you are, in every single day of your life, doing things in order to see that situation become Absolutely. a reality. Absolutely. But 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 here's the thing, right? I, I don't agree with the idea that, hey, if I, if me, per, me, just singular, me keeping the commandments right now, that tomorrow, because that's what Mordecai said, it could happen in any second. No. There's a there's a span of time like the the remnant that will return and will keep the commandments are going to have to come to that understanding in the process of the time that the Most High God has laid out for them. Very simply, right? There are brothers and sisters who don't know that they're Israelites, right? But they may listen and watch this dialogue between us of of different uh, schools of thought and say, "Oh, you know what? Then they're making a lot of sense. Hey, I am an Israelite. Okay." I'm an Israelite. Israelites have to do X, Y, Z. Israelites are promised X, Y, Z. I want those promises. Let me do what I'm required to do to receive those promises. And then bing, bang, boom, right? That's another brother or sister who's one for the Lord, right? One for God. So that happens in a space of time. So the point is very simple. God gave visions, prophecies, things that must come to pass. And they have appointed times. The prophecy that speaks about world peace, where there's no nation lifting up war, lifting up sword or spear against the other nation, there's no war. That is going to be a reality when the temple of God is established, right? Pursuant to Isaiah 2, which happens when the kingdom is established, all right, on the earth. That's when world peace will come. Not any second sooner, right? There's going to be constant war. Until God says, all right, enough's enough, all right, my kingdom is going to be established it's in the not, earth. 
it's, it's point like, blank period. It's like this. The, the the way I grew up, even the way I studied in university, a PhD, when you are facing some opinion or when you are trying to understand people's view, you always have to put your feet in their situation to understand from which corner they came. For me, it's always it's always sad to see someone with such potential of wisdom and intelligence refusing to see what people like me and Rabbi Mordechai find I found out in that Mishnah, in that Gemara, which give credit to some point that you are bringing. Your position of saying, I'm not there, it's very violent. Because how? Because it's like this. We are on your platform, for example. Mm -hmm. I do consider that I have to learn something for you, from you, sorry. So I'm here, I'm listening. On mm -hmm. the question you are asking me from my corner, I'm giving answer. But most of the time, I'm listening because I want to understand. Who am I to say that I know everything? We, what I said to the African Africa in Europe the last month, I said, you guys, you didn't understood that your parents, your father, your ancestors, they left some information in that book called Mishnah, in that books called Gemara. And even if it was hidden by some people with bad intention in the time, you have to go and get it. This is what we did the last 10 years. We didn't choose the path of saying, no, keep your tools for you. We don't care. I found Congo in the Mishnah. I found Congo in the Gemara. I've given the proof to say that the land of Israel is in Congo. The what? The land of Israel is in Congo. The promised land? The promised land. Is in Congo. Written in the books that you reject. So, so you're telling me that the mission is... I'm, I'm not saying that you have to believe to that book. No, no, no I just oh, want to make sure I'm clear. Missions. Hold on, real quick. I just want to make sure I'm clear what you're saying, right? So you're saying is that, that the Mishnah states that the land of the Congo is the promised land to Israel? One question. What is, where is the land of Kush? The land of Kush is... It, it's two parts of the land of Kush, depending on where you at. Some would say that parts of southern uh, Saudi Arabia are parts of the land of Kush, and then you also have modern day Ethiopia, Djibouti, uh, Somalia, so forth and so forth. No, in the books you don't want to open, it's explained that in Sudan, you having the Nilus, it can never be the land of Kush because the land of Kush is surrounded by another river called the Gihon, and that river is the Congo River. If we go deeper, mm -hmm. you have that books, the Mishnah that you, you you don't want to open even one page, telling you, you know what? That river in Jerusalem called the Gihon is not the real Gihon. It has been named after the real Gihon, which is quoted in, in Genesis. It sits in Africa. It's so where's the where's the, what's the where's the where's the the great river, the river of Egypt? That's the Nile, right? The, the river of Jeff, yeah, no, that's Pichon, Pichon. So, so God promised Abraham the land from the Nile to the great river Euphrates. The Congo is nowhere within that those borders. I'm talking about the land of Kush. I don't care about the I'm talking about the land of Israel. Oh, I'm talking about the land of Kush, but let me build it. My brother, why you why you are going oh, so fast? Oh, you like going to Israel? You have huh? to understand that you have I'm two levels of the Israel. Israel. It's so written my, like okay. this. It's written like this. Why in your in your Bible, like you say in your Torah, you have two expressions? Why sometimes it's said the son of Israel and sometimes say the people of the son people of Israel? Let's say I'm Ben Israel. Why do you have two different terms to talk about the same people? Because it's two different people which are from two different roots but connected to the same spirituality. You didn't you don't know about that, so, but let us maybe give you some tools. It's written by all the sages of Israel like this. You have to know that the one who were slaved in Egypt, they were not the one who came down with Jacob. They were the Egyptian converted who stood there in other places in the mountain. They were the one enslaved. And they will not die in the tenth place. They will go down in the land of Cush. That's what I'm talking about, the land of Cush. Ask to me, I give you the answers. So you said, these, I, I'm, I'm, now I'm getting even more confused. Thank you. you. See, 
I, I'm getting even now. more confused like, because see, see, the scriptures tell me that that God is not the author of confusion, right? And and right now, there's a lot of authorship of confusion going on because again, it's not in accordance to what God had written. I do not believe that God had 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 the Mishnah written, right? What, the, I, I, so wait, let me finish, brother Pankaj. Let me finish, what right? I do. We I analyze. We are exchanging. Don't believe. I, I want you to open the in the topics and to start to change to make up our minds. Okay, so so again, right? It's it's quite simple, right? The Mishnah, right? The Mishnah. I, I do believe that some of the, the oral traditions in the Mishnah came from our people, but I also understand that a lot of the things in the Mishnah in the Talmud are come from converts. People who are not actually descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I agree with you. That's why I understand that very you. wholeheartedly. But, uh, but here, you. here's the kicker, brother Pinchas, right? Yeah. And, and notice how I, I want y'all to understand. I, I, I'm not referring to you, brothers, as rabbi. The reason why is because my I don't need to. I don't need to. No, 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 I don't I as human being, we are talking. We no, are I got you. I, I'm just trying to explain something because there's going to be. People I understand that you right? in, in not the logicality of the. Of the Pirushim of what they call the Pharisian. Let's leave it. Let's go. We talk. We talk about. No, I, I got you. So the reason yeah, yeah, why I'm not doing that. The reason why I'm not doing that is because my King, right, my Savior, right, who the world knows as Jesus Christ, whose real name is Yahweh Shai, he said, "Call no man Rabbi, because you only have one Rabbi, which is Him. He's my Rabbi." So I only refer to who the world calls Jesus, Yahweh Shai, as Rabbi, right? That's the only person I refer to as Rabbi. Right. But anyway, his ministry. Right. And again, his ministry is, is outlined and in, and in, in prophesied in the Old Testament, in the so in the Tanakh and the Torah. Right. His whole ministry was him going against the Pharisees and the Sadducees, upholding of tradition, tra tradition, Mishnah. Right. Talmud, all these type of concepts to the standard of Torah, to the law of God. Literally, the law of God, Torah, Deuteronomy 4 and 2 says that you shall not add or diminish aught from the word that I command you. So when it comes to, as it pertains to what we should be following, I do not follow the traditions found in the Mishnah. I do not follow the things that are in the Talmud. I utilize these things as talking points, right, to, uh, of course, uh, come against mainstream Judaism because these are, again, converts who have bastardized our text and have infiltrated and put all types of madness and even the oral traditions that we had, right? But again, I don't, I'm don't. i not going to adhere to those oral traditions because my king, my savior, my rabbi told me not to uphold the traditions to the standard of the Torah. The only thing that I, Ariala, must do, right, in order to see world peace, in order to see my God's kingdom established on this earth is by me returning to the Torah, not anything else. Simple. It's glock glock boom pon Esau When we up, they down seesaw My flow like sushi, too raw Yeah, how am I power? Gear for war Ezekiel 2514 Vengeance pon Edom Says the Lord That path is narrow, not broad By faith and work, we won't fall We sliding on Edom from team in the Dita Hooked on the Torah, addicted, I'm feeling His mercy on Jacob, the heathen is cleaving They plow when I feels from morning to evening They got the power through murder and scheming We got up next year, you better believe it We got up next year, you better believe it Hey out to the max, but my spirit still intact. Plus, my brotherhood mean everything. Cause if I ever fall, they on me back up. This a car set, got a Floyd record. So spiritually, we can spread up. But if I was you, I wouldn't do this shit. You better off the line with a max truck. Got a battle axe, make you back up. Matter of fact, nigga, back up. Cause the spirit in you not upright. So I know any minute you can act up. It's the last day, so we strapped up. Money spiritual, so I stack up. Know what that means? Well, in other words, right after camp, I put a rack up.